Hey everyone. Um, so right now I'm in Aarhus, uh, northern Denmark, at the Fenegi facility, manufacturing facility. Uh, Klaus Jensen here is sales director for Fenegi, and he's got a hell of a lot of experience when it comes to CO2, working for a number of companies in this space. He handles all the industrial stuff. And, and trust me, we're going to see some pretty big racks. Um, and, you know, Fenegi have been around for a few years, but in the last two, three years, they've really made a name for themselves. And they're really starting to have an impact. Uh, I'm really happy to be here because I have not seen racks this big. Uh, and we're talking megawatt big here, megawatts of CO2. So this is really cool. Um, and, you know, obviously, uh, we're very happy and honored to, to approve Fenegi. They're one of the first Atmo-approved companies and manufacturers, best in class, world leader. And so uh, Klaus is going to show us a little bit, you know, the facility and different stations and how they assemble these. So racks. it starts here, right? When you assemble a rack, tell us a little bit about what we're seeing in the background, please. Basically, this is piping. This is a piping uh, department. So here we have uh, stainless steel piping and carbon steel piping. We so stainless steel and carbon steel. Stainless steel and carbon steel. We okay. split it. Okay. We separate it from each other. Okay. Uh, and here we. Uh, this is where it starts. I mean, first of all, is of course it starts in the engineering yeah. when we do all the engineering and the design. But when we start the production of a system, mm -hmm. it starts with some piping that needs to be cut yeah. and grinded. And uh, yeah, we can walk in here. Yeah. And you, you separate, right? And then when it comes to the grinding, you've separated the two? Yeah. Why is that? That is because you don't want to mix up stainless steel or carbon steel. So uh, in here, uh, first of all, we have these walls that we can okay. separate and keep all the dust, dust uh, and dirt out of okay. the production. We want our systems and our pipings to be extremely clean okay. inside. And we have a wall here separating the two areas. Yeah. So one side is for stainless and the other side is for carbon steel piping. Okay. And then we can walk here, sorry. So in here, grinding, cutting, um, and the, you have a constant vacuum in here, so all the dirt uh, particles stays in here. Okay. And you don't get them out here in the production that we want to keep, uh, of course, clean. Clean. And then here you've got, here towards the right, we've got these welding stations, right? Yeah, all the way down here, we have welding stations. We, I mean, we are a welding company. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we do all the design ourselves, of course, and then here we start to manufacture. And uh, here we do small sub-assemblies based on our own drawing. Uh, you can see here, here we are working on uh, stainless steel, and uh, in here we are welding and, uh, yeah. Then you have the material coming in from our warehouse and then we start to do all these sub-assemblies, uh, putting things together mm -hmm. and making bigger, bigger, bigger sub-assemblies the further down we go through the production. Okay. And uh, what's this down here? This one. <laughs> <laughs> what's this here? Uh, that's for training. No, this is our ejector. That's a pretty uh, big ejector. Yeah, it's our own design. Okay. Uh, I think um, when, when Fenergy was... Uh, uh, started, yep. we uh, quickly realized that there were no, there was not a big enough ejector available on the, the market, market, right? And we need to do something. We, ejector is mandatory for a CO2 heat pump, I would claim. So be competitive, you need ejectors. You need, com if, if you compare to refrigerant, and some people might know a CO2 from the past, yeah. um, working with heat pumps is like in a refrigeration world, it would be like running in a constant high ambient yeah. temperature. So you run constantly at high pressure because this is where you can uh, deliver the heat. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, the ejector really benefit a heat pump all day, all year okay. around. And on a typical rack, you would have several of these installed? Yeah, right? we could have up to six, uh, six. six on each system. <laughs> and it's, on uh, each it, rack? It's, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a monster. <laughs> uh, but there were no other com uh, components available yeah. on the market. So we did that in a close collaboration uh, with Norwegian uh, University, okay. and it's, it's our design. Uh, we don't manufacture it ourselves, but it's our design and it's manufactured here in Denmark. Okay. Well, so we've got a couple of racks here. Tell us a little bit about some of them. Maybe you want to start off with this one here. Yeah, this is our biggest uh, rack platform. So this rack platform, it's a pretty big rack, right? Yeah. One, what, how many megawatts would this be for? This can be up to three megawatts. Up to three megawatts, three just megawatt. for that one rack? That's one rack, yeah. 
Okay. So uh, we can squeeze in, <laughs> I would say, eight, yeah. eight compressors. Multiple compressors down we here. We can add multiple compressors okay. down here. Yep. We are working mainly with uh, eight cylinder uh, bits of compressors that you will see later on okay. on other systems. And here there's room enough for eight compressors, okay. eight cylinder. And then we're seeing some of the ejectors. I don't know if you can see up here. Yeah, it's not so easy to see in this yeah, rack. Up but at the top. But on the top here, there is four of our own ejectors. Yeah. Um, up there, you can yeah. probably see. And okay. then, uh, then you see here, Kelvin heat exchangers, gas coolers. Okay. So each of them can deliver around uh, 1.5 megawatt. So we have two on this system, so it's a three megawatt system. Jeez. And then you, and then uh, another Atmo approved supplier actually, a Temprite. This is their biggest oil separator you've got here, and you're yeah. already. These are the biggest ones they have, right? Yeah, th that is. And you're is. already using two of those for one rack. Yeah, we're using two of them <laughs> on this system. Exactly. Oh my god. All right, and then here's another rack. That's another rack. And you can see some of the bits of compressors. Yeah. In this Eight cylinders, you said, for each one, right? Yeah, so in this case, we have six compressors. Uh, so I'm guessing this is around 2.2 megawatt okay. system. So it's uh, the smaller brother to that one. Yeah. Um, and that was our biggest system just, uh, I think, one and a half years ago. Okay. So that was the, this is the big brother. That's uh, So we're megawatts now. So this is multiple megawatts. So you can... You could have several of these racks side by side yeah. for projects 10 to 20 megawatts. Yeah, yeah. This, the is the, this is the world that you're in right now. That's the world we are in. Later in the production, we have uh, six, sorry, five identical uh, three megawatt heat pumps standing. So 15 for megawatts. Yeah. yeah. Five times, well, five, yeah. Yeah. Five it's racks a, it's of a 13 meg megawatt project, 13 megawatt air project. to water heat pump okay. that are going to be installed in a city a south Denmark to produce a heat for district heating. Okay. That's the main purpose. So it's five identical systems comparable to the big one that you just saw. Okay. Now we're towards the end of the manufacturing process, right? The yeah. fine tuning. The fine tuning, you can right. see. And then the here you've got, so you've got five of these racks going for one customer, yeah. one project. Yeah, five exactly like this system. Uh, is going to one big project, uh, 13 megawatt air. District heating. District heating. Okay. Yeah. So it's air to water district heating, 13 okay. megawatt uh, in the southern part of Denmark. Okay. Um, and you can see again, now the product is more finalized. You have uh, insulation on it, yep. all the wiring and the cabling yep. are done. You have the electrical panel now okay. installed, okay. of course, including our own uh, Siemens PLC. Okay. So we are always working with the Siemens platform, but okay. we have uh, our own software. We have uh, our own software engineers who can program and code this uh, PLC. And that's, we have that on all our systems. That's all online. You're all on the cloud, tracking all of this in yes. real time, every project you've done and yes. installed. Yes, we right? have access, remote access to all our systems. That's uh, mandatory yeah, for yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Okay, so Fenegi is well known for its leadership in CO2, but, and this is, the, this is the cool part, well, another cool part of what they're doing, is that they're also working with different hydrocarbons. And, and Klaus is going to tell us a little bit about what, you know, how that all happened, uh, and where they're going with different hydrocarbons and different capacities, and we're talking megawatts again for cooling and heating uh, with different hydrocarbons, so at different temperatures. So this will be, you know, this is also showing that, you know, Fenegi <coughs> want to be, you know, a natural refrigerant leader. Okay, not ammonia, can't be perfect, right? No. But, you know, you, you, you're obviously working on the, on the CO2 part and the hydrocarbon part, so that's already two out of three of the main, the three main uh, natural refrigerants, not to offend our friends from water and air. So. How did Fenegi start with isobutane? Well, basically it started with, uh, we got a lot of inquiries that we didn't have the answer for. Mm -hmm. And then we are, we are entrepreneurs and we like to, I mean, we don't like to say no to customers. <laughs> so we started to think, it started like a district heating projects where you have high return water temperatures. Here CO2 is not perfect as a standalone refrigerant. So when, then we started thinking, why not combine it with isobutane? Of course, we are only in for the naturals. And then we started to look at using uh, isobutane heat pumps for subcooling the water, subcooling the CO2 system. So this and is about bringing down the temperature, basically. It's about bringing down the temperature okay. for the water entering the heat pump. Okay. Uh, CO2, 
very nice with uh, high delta T yeah. and cold return water entering the gas cooler, high supply temperatures. Yeah. When, this, when, the, when the return temperature starts to increase, let's imagine above uh, 45, 50 degrees, then you, uh, then you need to do, so do something different if you want to have good performance. And this is where the hydro... So, wait, so, so just to finish off on that before we talk yeah. about what we're yeah. seeing behind... So the idea was that you, know, you started Visor View 10 as a complement to what you were doing with CO2. Yes, To help the performance of the CO2 overall, yes. right? But then you thought, okay, well, why can't we have standalone as well? Yeah, but, but yeah. basically then, I mean, our eyes opened and the, to, 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 for this hydrocarbon refrigerant, yeah. Uh, technology in the market. I, for us, it was something new. We, uh -huh. we were, it was kind of, I mean, I, my, myself and uh, many of the people inside Finity has worked with CO2 for a long time. Yep. And hydrocarbon is more comparable to a normal refrigerant. Yes. It, do, it doesn't run transcritical and it, yeah. and, and it works with low delta T. So it's completely different. And, yep. and that opens, of course, new markets yep. to us as well. Okay. So, so now, yes, we are in the hydrocarbon production area. And these units here are actually for a biogas uh, so, facility. So what we're seeing here behind here is for a biogas customer that's coming yes. up, right? And, but what, what are we actually seeing? Just point out some of the elements here. Yeah, what we're seeing here is a, a screw compressor. That's another uh, bit. That's screw. another bit. So on a, on a unit like this could be around one megawatt. So you, 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 you're making bits are happy, right? You're a good customer for bits, I'd I, say. I think so. Yeah, think they can't so. really complain. No, they don't. No complain complaining, bits are. <laughs> <laughs> right, but then so what else have you got there? So. We are having a, uh, it's a water to water okay. unit. So it's, uh, it can cool and can heat, but it's on the water side. So okay. that means we keep the refrigerant charts very small. Mm -hmm. On a system like this, it could be up to around one megawatt per, per, per compressor. One megawatt per one compressor. Per compressor. <laughs> Depending of course where you operate. So okay. it could also be 500 kilowatt, but okay. up to one megawatt per okay. compressor. Uh -huh. And then with a refrigerant chart, uh, around uh, even less than 50 kilos, so per rack, per compressor, per, comp per compressor, 50 kilos of 50 charge. kilos of okay. Uh, charge. Okay. So um, yeah. And, and you've got so you've got a few that are being made right now. Yeah, this is uh, for a biogas pr project where we'll deliver uh, three machines with mm -hmm. each three compressors. So three of these. So uh, three megawatts. Per machine, and per then three times. So nine. Yeah. Well, a little bit less than nine. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So and we've got one basically assembled, right? Yeah, one because then we take these modules and put them together uh -huh. uh, in a machine like this. <laughs> and we, uh, then we actually, you can see this is just three modules, but they are connected now on okay. the water side. Okay. So it's three individual refrigerant circuits. Basically, yep. it's three individual heat pumps, okay. but we take in water through one unit heat it up in three steps. Okay. That way we also make the efficiency of the system better. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's a- uh, Hence why you have that modular approach. It's really about optimizing the efficiency. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. Exciting. So this, what temperatures are we getting up to here? Well, uh, this is a high isobutyl machine and yeah. it can deliver us up to uh, 95 degrees supply. Celsius. Celsius supply okay. temperature. Yeah and even with a high return temperature. So that, this is where it's very different from uh, CO2. So we can heat up water from 70 to 90 or from okay. 60 to 70, that range. So then when you've got, you, you're hearing more and more in the industry that people want higher temperatures than that? Yeah. So we're, we're, what's your thinking? What's Fenegy's thinking fin fin well, on this? Will you be doing other, other kind of hydrocarbons on this? Yeah, what we do is that we combine also with propane. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine a machine like this, one of the stages in the, in the lower end could be propane. Okay. And then you really benefit from both the refrigerant because okay. propane is good at lower temperature where isobutane is better on the higher temperatures. Okay. And this, I mean, it really was a uh, eye opener for us with the hydrocarbons because now we see a very big potential for biogas projects okay. like this one. Uh, it could be power to X, it could be uh, geothermal, it could be carbon capture. So many of these new areas where new we really see growth and where there are really a lack of uh, heat pumps. We okay, see and the, the higher temperatures could be 
you could reach those higher temperatures needed for some of these industries yeah. with other hydrocarbon blends. I, I don't know if you're allowed to mention, or hydrocarbons, are you allowed to mention the ones that you're thinking about for the future, or are you, it's too yeah. early to say? It's too early to say, I would okay. say, but, but of course, now we are, I mean, we are, you're looking at it. We are looking at it. We are at 95 degrees now. This, yeah. is, this is our limit. Yeah. But of course, uh, the t t technology is, is evolving. Uh, evolving all the time, yeah. and we are already getting inquiries for 110, 120, 140 degrees okay. supply temperature and heat pumps. All right. And we will get there All right. at so, some point of time. So basically a message here is Fenige are known for their innovation. A lot of the people that are part of the Fenige team have a history of that at Fenige, but also at prior organizations. So you can count on them to come up with solutions for those temperature ranges of 120, 130 and higher. Yeah, not, yeah not, watch not, this space. Not, not, not too not, high. Not, not, not too in high. the next years, No, but, but it's, it's coming. It, it, it's coming. Yeah. All right. Cool. Watch this space, guys.